Throughout the world of Isaya, romance is the pursuit of love and partnership, and eventually the formation of family. I understand that you might be celebrating your own festival of love in your world soon. I don't think I would like yours very much, to be frank. I think I would find it a little bit too stressful. You remember all of those speed dates that my handler made me go on last year? Uh... But I'm sure that romance looks a little different here than it looks like in your world. For starters, in Isaiah, no one really cares who you romance. It's expected that any person might be attracted to any other person. After all, the heart and body want what they want. Sex and gender don't really play into it for us. Of course, some people aren't interested in this sort of thing at all, or they have a complicated relationship with it, and that's alright too. Though I still think it's funny if people only like one sex or gender. Imagine only liking half of the world population. <laughs> Most of the humans show romantic attraction fairly similarly throughout the world of Isaiah, despite their separation over time and space. They give compliments, they do favors, they give gifts, and they have long talks in the night about their childhood traumas, and then, when their propinquity is high enough, they blurt out a confession. That being said, southerners are a lot more likely to touch you or hug you, even if you don't know each other to show affection. Certain Sphonic subcultures even kiss on the cheek, both romantically and platonically. This would confuse me so much. <laughs> Northerners are a lot less touchy. You cannot simply tell someone that you like them deeply. They will doubtlessly take advantage of you. You must be subtle so that you can deny it if they do not return the feelings. We use subtle glances or we lick our lips or uh, brush hands, find excuses to touch. We might even signal each other with fans or the way that we fold our gloves. Unfortunately, this isn't very friendly to those who struggle with this subtle kind of language. Thankfully, the Sagan are more open than us. They describe it as, there is a certain point where you cannot contain your emotions anymore and you must tell them. But imagine confessing without knowing how your intended feels. That would be horrifying. E. Oh, writing and singing songs for those that you love is also a very common saying in tradition, though if you were to confess with a song and fool, this would be seen as ridiculous. Singing and serenading is only for those already in relationships. I think the Sagan inherited this openness from the Selkies, who often sing and fight and hug and touch their lo loved ones, and even throw seaweed at their intended. Though Nessa has never thrown seaweed at me. But maybe this is just because she uh, was raised amongst humans, and so she doesn't have this ingrained in her as much. As I understand it, as I understand it, the demons and Shahirzani have magic and non-magic pheromones, respectively, so the need for words in their languages and their cultures is much lesser because you can basically smell how others feel. And in the Shahirzani's case, you can foresee how they will react or say things to you in the future. Um, and as such, it's much more acceptable to just walk up to people and see how far they want it to go. Romantic and sexual attraction is exceedingly obvious to basically everyone. There may be some individuals who are unable to sense pheromones properly, properly but they are very rare. And in the demon's case, unfortunately, they are very likely to be turned into food because the difference between a demon and a non-demon is blood magic. So if a demon doesn't have any, they're basically not a person to the demons. Thankfully, in the Shahir Kasani's case, they can use their future sight as an aid, and they'll be able to see if they're about to mess up a social encounter. And I don't think I've heard of a single Shahirzani who doesn't have future sight. You know, I'll have to ask Al-Hisan about Shahirzani marriage next time I visit the desert. I mentioned earlier that romance is about the creation of families in Isaiah, but you might find that every culture defines family a little differently, and sometimes even in contradictory ways. In Nova Thule, a nuclear family unit is the head of a house, they're the head siblings, the sibling spouses, the head's children, and the children's spouses, but not the head's siblings, children's spouses. <laughs> I guess that's where the line cuts off. Uh, so this basically amounts to two generations, and then once the head's child has children, that child will then take over the role of the new head of the family, and they'll help their parents move somewhere nice to retire. Obviously, not all houses are this big, but even so, extended families will live together in one giant apartment complex or a farmhouse. And it's typically understood that a spouse marrying richer will take on the richer family name. Young people will also break away to form new houses when they have children. 
Speaking of marriage, in Nova Thule, marriage is mostly about dictating who gets your stuff when you die, and or a chance to show off how much wealth you have to your neighbors with a party. Uh, since that's mostly a business arrangement, and you know, it's just about it determining which pairings kids receive inheritance, and it has a lot less to do with love, though commoners do typically love the people they're marrying. And this means that nobles might marry their best friend so that their kids inherit their things, but their lover and life partner is someone else. Usually this kind of setup is discussed by the families beforehand, so usually no one is upset by these sorts of arrangements. Actually, this is also the case for Sagan marriages. They're basically legal affairs with some ceremony attached to them. Uh, and technically, you're not supposed to have kids before marriage, and therefore you're not really supposed to have sex before marriage either, because then the kids won't get any of your stuff if you die. Um, but their marriage ceremonies are a lot more elaborate. Each one is unique to the families being joined. Typically, they involve song, dance, and elaborate costumes, and the couple will make or commission new eating knives for each other before the ceremony and trade them at the end. Then, everyone will go and make a big hot pot dish. The wife, or yeah, I guess she's the wife at that point. The wife or bride will bring the pot and the groom will start the fire and every other guest will bring some sort of ingredient. In Sagenheim, the nuclear family consists of only the parents and the children. Marriage isn't really considered to make someone switch families, but simply to join the two families together legally. So everyone just keeps their names. It's the titles that get passed down familially from uh, to eldest children when relevant, such as, for example, if they are a king or a queen, they'll pass on the role of king or queen to their daughters or sons. That being said, even more important than your nuclear family are your shield siblings. You all live together under one roof, or in the case of a non-warrior cast member, then colleagues or guild members or some such. Whoever is in your hall. That being said, extended family tends to be relatively close, and they'll all typically specialize in one role in society. They'll all end up living in the same hall anyway, even though that's not technically required. And it's expected that you will help all of your extended family members, regardless of what hall you end up in. You'd think, with this kind of emphasis on family, that they would have a more communal culture, but this is not the case. They are hyper-individualist. Sure, your family and extended family will always feed you and protect you and educate you no matter what. They'll even approve of arts and crafts, history and music, fighting and sailing. All of that is valued equally in their culture. In fact, you should be a specialist in all of it. <laughs> but. If your cousins are at the top of their classes, why aren't you? Oh, you are at the top of your class? Well, then why aren't you more ahead of your classmates? Sagenheim may not have crime problems like Nova Thule, but that just means people are metaphorically trying to backstab you, rather than literally. When children are old enough, they will usually continue to live in the same hall, but sometimes they'll go out to seek their own. Or if they lose their eye or commit crimes, then they will end up joining the Sage Hall. Despite the communal sharing of resources, they dis incidentally, despite the communal sharing of resources, however, they don't typically communally share uh, sexual or romantic partners. In contrast to this, in the South, you're supposed to consider everyone your family. But in reality, people maybe only care about their town or their city block, and even more typically, they'll form polycules with romantic and platonic partners, and the nuclear family becomes their partners and those partners' children. In Telethon specifically, dating your cousins is actually considered acceptable because they don't track family that closely, but the Sphonic typically think this is either gross or snobbish because their sars would do it. So in practice, it doesn't happen a ton, thank goodness. Marriage, however, is still technically illegal, so this makes all relationships very fluid and renegotiable, and people rarely cohabitate with their partners in big cities, though they might move to the same apartment or condominium or villa. Since marriages are legally outlawed and you're not supposed to be in exclusive relationships, uh, you're supposed to value the needs of the whole state above any individual family or some such. Um, and they don't really have marriage ceremonies anymore either. However, the, this philosophy originated in Telethans, so it's a lot less widely prevalent throughout the rest of the continent. Previously, a marriage ceremony would be organized at their spring festival, 
where couples could dance together as well as consider their future professions. Young couples, particularly. I imagine this might be a little like your Valentine's Day mixed with a job fair. It's all about love and potential compatibility. After all, if you love your job more than your partner and your job will take you far away, then you aren't compatible, right? This is what it's like for young people at the Spring Festival. The ceremony itself is prefaced by both sides bathing and wearing their nicest white clothes. Women's hair will be put up in fancy headdresses and veiled. Uh, men typically didn't do this, though in marriages between two men nowadays, hats are typically substituted. Or sometimes they'll just wear veils anyway. And if they don't really conform to either of those genders, then they'll just do whatever they feel like, I guess. Then they'll go to the nearest shrine to receive counseling in their marriage and blessing from the illuminator there. Then the hat or veil will be removed, symbolizing that there is nothing to hide between life partners. As many people as the couple can afford will witness this whole ceremony and advice and bond and such, and afterwards there'll be a dinner and music, and the two will sleep together for the first time that night, and move into their own wing of a house. Nowadays, despite the ceremonies being outlaws, they're actually still widely practiced by commoners. The government will just crack down on any czars engaging in this behavior, because this sorts of thing typically preludes an attempted uprising, or in the worst cases, forcing their children to sleep with people they don't want. So you're probably wondering at this point, Arlisar, did the romances you started last year end up going anywhere? Did you continue to see any people from then? And the answer is yes, actually. I think my handler was right, actually. I did need to try to move on. And I think everything's going really well. Everyone's so good to me, and I think everyone else still thinks that I'm really useful. So I hope there are no looming demonic incursions, and that people won't start vanishing off the streets and being knit into flesh cocoons, and otherwise disrupting my peaceful life. <sighs> we need to talk. Hi, uh, it's me, I'm my query. Um, and I've legitimately had a pretty rough February. I've been really low energy and brain fog, and and I've had a lot of paid work going on, and I got a second rabbit. But unlike Arlisser and her low-key toxic relationships, which you can read about now, links in the description, rabbits are not getting along very well. And this is about how uh, you expect it to go. Bonding rabbits is always tough and stressful. Um... But, you know, it's, I mean, like, you'd find it more stressful, too, if your pets were literally trying to murder each other, and you loved them both, and also their vet bills are very high if they do to succeed in trying to murder each other. So, yeah. I also feel like I've just been kind of in a rut with my writing lately, and, like, I just cannot get Ria's character voice to feel natural and right and for it to feel good. Rio is so hard. He didn't used to be hard, but I feel like he's just become so hard for me to write. Anyway, this video got thrown together a little last minute, and it might show. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I guess they can't all be bangers, but I'm saying this because I never want my channel to be about encouraging perfectionism, and, um, you know, I want to be, like, authentic and real with you about what's going on in my life, and you know, all that stuff. I actually seriously considered just making this an update video instead of, instead of, like, uh, a, a usual video, but I promised you guys romance, so I am ensuring that I deliver. I love you all. Um, February is my least favorite month. I feel like terrible things happen in February, but hopefully things are gonna start improving here. I'm on a better diet, and hopefully, you know, we'll all get my energy back and things will slow down a little bit and I'll be able to catch my breath. And that next month's video will be a sol- It'll be good, guys. It'll be good. Also, please, VTube model, please stop looking like I'm scowling. I'm not scowling that much. Look, I'm smiling. I'm grinning. Please make me look happy. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. Okay, just trust that I- just- just pretend. Just pretend like I'm happy. <laughs> I'm, like, so upset. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have a good February, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day.